Welcome to Healthcare Workflow Process Improvement, Process Redesign, Lecture A. The objectives for this lecture are to identify the factors that optimize workflow processes in healthcare settings and describe how information technology can be used to increase the efficiency of workflow in healthcare settings. The topics covered in this lecture A, Process Redesign, include Objectives and Goals of Process Redesign, Unproductive Work, 27 Strategies for Optimizing Processes, and an example of each optimization strategy. Healthcare is comprised of individuals working in processes. As W. Edwards Deming stated, you can only elevate individual performance by elevating that of the entire system. Deming, 1982. Paraphrasing this quote, the way to consistently improve the performance of individuals is to improve the system or process. The goal of process analysis is to identify aspects of the process that cause or make process problems more likely. The goal of process redesign is to prevent or mitigate process problems, for example, delays, errors, wasted resources, or inconsistencies. Process redesign is a strategic initiative to improve the quality, cost, and safety of patient care. Goals of process redesign include improving quality and safety of care, enhancing the patient's care experience, decreasing the cost of care, and making clinic processes more efficient. Achieving these goals often involves replacing manual processes with processes capable of greater accuracy and higher performance, and making changes in who performs tasks. An effective approach for doing this leverages health IT to automate processes, gives patients more control, provides more useful information to providers, practice staff, and patients, and shares data between providers. If we say that unproductive work is the problem, then redesign strategies are the potential solutions. Redesign strategies are applied to fix process problems. There are some natural matches between problems and strategies to fix them. The key to process redesign is identifying process problems, unproductive work, and applying the right redesign strategy. In a clinic, unproductive work is effort that does not contribute to patient care, i.e., tasks that are not necessary for providing patient care. Unproductive work includes waiting, transportation and unnecessary motion, doing things twice, for example, writing a prescription and then documenting that the prescription was written, errors, repetitive tasks performed by humans, and people with higher level of training than necessary performing tasks. Unproductive work can be identified during knowledge acquisition, process analysis, or during redesign. Note that by unproductive work, we are not talking about breaks, meal time, and vacation, i.e., things necessary for humans to be rested. These things contribute in important ways to patient care by making sure that providers and staff are at their best when caring for patients. If we say that unproductive work is the problem, then redesign strategies are the potential solutions. Redesign strategies are applied to fix process problems. There are some natural matches between problems and strategies to fix them. The key to process redesign is identifying process problems, unproductive work, and applying the right redesign strategy. In the words of Blaine Lee, one of the original founders of the Covey Leadership Center, before you attempt to set things right, make sure you see things right. Lee, N.D. In a recent case study reported by Mansar and Ryers, introduction of technology accounted for 25% improvement in invoicing time. Mansar and Ryers, 2005. Adding process redesign in addition to technology resulted in 80% improvement. Thus, while technology is often necessary, it is seldom sufficient. Mansar and Ryers, Mansar and Ryers, 2005, have synthesized known strategies to decrease the amount of unproductive work, 
Each is defined and illustrated with an example on the following slides. For the purposes of this unit, we have consolidated closely related strategies. A checklist of these redesigned strategies can be used on the job to systematically assess clinic processes for redesign opportunities. Strategies for redesign include automation, buffering, centralization, control addition, and relocation, as well as contact reduction and use of customer teams and case managers. Other redesign strategies are empower, exception, extra resources, flexible assignment, integration, interfacing, and knockouts. Each of these will be discussed in the following slides. Other strategies are given here and include outsourcing, order assignments, and resequencing. It is important to understand that in the clinical setting, application of health IT can be used to facilitate or outright accomplish many of these strategies. Automation means designing processes so that machines, i.e. computers, can do them rather than humans. Things that may lend themselves well to automation are those that can be completely defined, performed in identical fashion each time, and are sufficiently repetitive that the automation efforts are cost-effective. Design decisions related to this allocation of function determine the extent to which a given job, task, function, or responsibility is to be automated or assigned to human performance. The decisions are based on many factors. These include the relative capabilities and limitations of humans versus technology in terms of reliability, speed, accuracy, strength, flexibility of response, financial cost, the importance of successful or timely accomplishment of tasks, safety, and user satisfaction, both short-term, for example, as comfort and pleasure, and long-term, for example, as health, well-being, and job satisfaction. Basing such decisions solely on those functions the technology is capable of performing and then simply allocating the remaining system functions to users is likely to result in an ineffective design. There are many opportunities to use computer systems to automate clinic processes. Some examples are triggering prescription refills, alerting clinicians to abnormal lab results, triggering planned assessments, and subscribing to automatic information updates rather than waiting and requesting information when needed. Mansar calls this buffering. Mansar and Ryers, 2005. Centralization can mean common coordination of activities at multiple locations, such that they are done the same way. It can also mean carrying out tasks at one location rather than having them be carried out by multiple organizations or individuals. Using a claims clearinghouse is often more efficient for a practice than the practice submitting claims to multiple insurance companies. Assigning one person in the clinic to answer the phone or one person to handle prescription refill requests are also examples of centralization that may increase efficiency. Control addition means adding checks in a process. Addition of a control step identifies errors before they have a negative impact. This control can be performed by a human or a computer, i.e., it can be automated. Control addition examples in healthcare are numerous. Some examples include checking insurance eligibility of a planned procedure or a copay, checking insurance eligibility of a prescription prior to sending it home with a patient, and checking for drug-drug interactions or drug allergies prior to writing a prescription. Additional control addition examples in healthcare include counting sponges and instruments before closing a surgery site, double-checking the name on the medication and the patient armband prior to administration, and marking the surgery site and confirming with the patient prior to surgery. Control, or work relocation, is changing the person who performs a task, triggers a task to be done, or approves a task. In principle, control relocation usually means pushing control to the front line. Stated differently, it means empowering those closest to the customer to make more decisions or even pushing control to the customer.
There are several notable examples of control relocation in healthcare. These include home monitoring devices, i.e., patients taking their blood pressure daily and entering it into a website or using a device to transmit the data to their provider, online appointment scheduling, online data entry of patient information before a visit, and patient portals that enable patients to share their health records with other providers. Contact reduction is straightforward. It involves decreasing the number of contacts, length of contacts, or otherwise decreasing the resources devoted to customer contact. Notable examples of contact reduction in healthcare include completion of patient information forms before a visit, automated appointment reminders, and pushing tasks down to the lowest level of staff with appropriate training. Mansar and Ryers, Mansar and Ryers 2005, call this category customer teams. In healthcare, these are known as care teams. Sometimes organizations can be complex for customers to navigate. One way to alleviate customer dissatisfaction and other untoward effects caused by complexity is to assign a case manager or a group of people involved in providing services to a customer. Case managers and care teams smooth the process and increase customer satisfaction. Examples include a case manager assigned to a patient who needs multiple ancillary services, a Medicaid case manager, a case manager for a patient's interaction and interface with social services, and a patient advocate. In healthcare, often multiple care providers are needed, including doctors, nurses, and allied health professionals. These professionals come together to provide a care team that works together to provide for a patient's needs. An exception is a case that is somehow different from the rest, usually involving incompleteness, errors, special circumstances, or special needs. Exception handling is designing a process to handle the ordinary cases and shunting the exceptions into a different work stream. The practice of separating exceptions frees the process to operate at maximum efficiency, i.e., the process is not gummed up by special cases. Often in process redesign, it is tempting to design for exceptions. Resist this temptation. Design for the norm and separate out the exceptions. A good example of exception handling is the drive through at fast food restaurants. If there is something about an order that is not ready when the car gets to the window, the cashier takes the money and asks the driver to pull aside, after which the other normal cases can flow smoothly, i.e., the main designed process isn't held up because of one guy's fries. The exception, we're not ready. The process is designed so that the exception doesn't interfere or reduce the efficiency. Exception handling examples in healthcare include having a special process for contacting no shows and rescheduling, and when one lab test in a batch is held up, Available results are returned per schedule, and the lab test that was held up is reported when available. Extra resources means identifying those process steps that are known bottlenecks, i.e., the processes cause downstream delays, and then adding extra resources at those steps to optimize the overall process. An example of extra resources in healthcare include keeping someone at the front desk to check patients in and maintaining sufficient medical office assistants and nursing staff so that everything that can be done before the provider sees the patient is done, with time to spare so the provider does not have to wait. Flexible assignment is hedging your bet and minimizing risk. In process design, things might not always work out or may have unintended consequences. Flexible assignment means making changes in staff, for instance, that don't lock the practice should things go wrong. An example would be hiring a medical office assistant who can also do blood draws, in case having the nurses draw blood causes an imbalance in workload. Integration is designing clinic processes so that they mesh well with high-volume, high-interaction organizations. By mesh well, we mean that handoffs processes are automated and flow smoothly. Examples include electronic interface with the claims clearinghouse, 
electronic interface with a lab or high volume diagnostic service, and electronic interface with a local hospital. Interfacing means providing common and standard interaction points for high volume interactions. Some examples include all labs come through a lab interface, online appointment scheduling, and all documents are received in one place and processed. Knockout essentially means fail fast. Decisions that decrease workload should be made as early in the process as possible. For example, checking insurance eligibility first thing, initiating the approval process for a procedures as early as possible, and screening patients for issues that require urgent or a higher level of care immediately. For example, practice phone messages say, first of all, if this is a life-threatening emergency, hang up and call 911. It is important to design processes to involve as few roles and people as possible. This eliminates unnecessary delays, extra handoffs, and communication errors. Be careful to avoid splitting responsibilities across departments or organizations. This is more a design principle than a strategy with examples. If others can do things better or more efficiently than the clinic, consider outsourcing. Examples where outsourcing may be more efficient include responding to requests for records, using an external lab or diagnostic testing service, and hosting the medical record software and IT support. Identifying process types is more a principle than a strategy. But the process analysis should have identified the main types of clinic work streams and processes. Queues and batches cause delays and wait time. To avoid long queues and large batches of work, it is best to assign work as it comes in and to a person responsible for seeing the work through to completion. For example, guaranteed same-day appointments avoid patient backups and Assigning a person to handle all prescription refills, regardless of whether the prescription is called in by patients or pharmacies. Anything that can be done in parallel, rather than waiting for another step to be completed, should be done in parallel. Resequence process steps to accomplish tasks as early in the process as possible. Task composition is more something to consider than a redesign strategy. Some things are better done as smaller steps, while other things may be easier to accomplish as a group of steps. An example is the processing of incoming documents. Processing incoming documents is more efficient and accurate when broken down into smaller steps. These steps include opening all the mail, checking for document identifiers on the envelopes, sorting in patient number order, and filing. This is more efficient and accurate than opening a single piece of mail, checking the envelope for document identifiers, processing and filing before opening the next piece of mail. Task elimination is probably what most people think of first when they hear the words process redesign. Getting rid of steps that do not add value, i.e. the unproductive work. Examples. E-prescribing eliminates a significant number of steps. Getting rid of redundant work does, too. Automating steps effectively eliminates tasks that humans need to do, and control relocation also can eliminate tasks that office staff need to do. Specialist generalist is more of a consideration than a particular strategy that can be applied. Some things are more efficient if a person handles only one type of issue. An example would be in a large practice where one person can devote 100% of his time to scheduling external diagnostic tests or surgeries. Whereas in a small practice, people wear many hats. The choice of specialist or generalist depends on the training and skill level required for a task, on how easy a task is to do when it is not the main focus of someone, and on the size of the practice. Triage is related to the specialist, generalist concept. Triage means that there is an initial sorting step where things requiring specialist attention are sent to specialists and others are sent where they are most efficiently handled. For example, a triage nurse in an emergency department ensures that urgent patients get seen first 
and less serious ones wait longer. Some process changes are large. Breakthroughs in improving efficient, major shifts in the way work is done, and great improvements in performance. Other changes are small, with incremental advances. Many of the strategies discussed above, depending on how they are applied, can be either. The former usually takes more preparation and planning, and of course, innovation. This concludes Lecture A of Process Redesign. In this lecture, we covered goals of process redesign, common process problems, process redesign strategies to address common process problems, and clinic examples of redesign strategies.